that is endeavor that has sinned against us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Lord, help me here. So what he's saying here is, I, if you forgive me, God, yeah. I'm willing to forgive somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So many folks in the church say, I can't forgive. I, I can't. I can't. I can't get with that pastor. I can't. I can't forgive them because they hurt me. Don't you hurt God? Don't you do things that are not pleasing to God? Don't you go some places that you don't have no business on? Don't you do some things that you don't have? Don't you say, Come on, don't try to get all holy up here again. But don't you know that we hurt God? But yet He forgives us. Oh, yeah. He said there must be a pattern. There must be a priority in prayer. There must be a pattern. But then he comes and moves it a little closer because he talks about the persistency in prayer. Yeah. Right there in the idea in verse 5, he says, And he says unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? Mm -hmm. And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me. And I have nothing to set before him. All right. And he forthwith within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed, and I cannot arise and give them. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because of his friend, but yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Yeah. It says there should be some persistency mm -hmm. in prayer. Yeah. But then he uses a parable mm. that carries a main thought. Yeah. This friend comes to a friend yeah. at midnight. Yes, sir. This friend comes to a friend yeah. at a shameless hour at the night. All right. And he said, a friend has come. And I don't have nothing to put before him. Yeah. My friend, I'm in a bad position. According to Eastern culture, uh, you have to present your guests with some food. Right. And undoubtedly, he didn't have anything at that time. Right. So he goes to a friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he asks the friend to help him out. Yeah. The friend really didn't want to help him. Mm. But because he was persistent. Yeah. He helped him. That says a whole lot to me. Sometimes people really don't want to help us. No. But because of your persistency, yeah. Yeah. they will help you. Right. So what the text says is you got to not quit yeah. when you pray. Right. How many of y'all have heard people say, I prayed, but it ain't working for me. That's because you haven't prayed long enough. It don't mean how loud you pray, but you have to pray sometimes a long time. And then some of y'all have heard people say, you know, I prayed hard. Yeah. I don't know how you pray hard. I prayed hard tonight. How do you pray hard? Either you pray persistent, consistent, but not hard. And prayer ought not to be all about me. Yeah. So he says here, that now you take the, when you look at this idea, he said you're taking this idea of persistence in prayer and saying, you know, God, uh, maybe I need to keep talking to you yeah. about this matter. All right. All right. Uh, Paul says, I, I talked to the Lord three times. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord came back to me and said, my grace yeah. is sufficient. Yeah. That means you ought not stop talking to God. No matter what's going on in your life, you ought to believe that God has the answer. Not too many Christians that lose fight, sight of things when things are not going well. Too many of y'all get all frustrated when you get some bad news about your loved ones, about what's going on in your life. You ought to have some faith in God. Because the Bible says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Let me go preach to myself in here. A whole lot of y'all can't, can't handle it because things ain't going like you think they ought to go. But I know somebody who is in control of my situation. I know somebody who walks with me. I know somebody who talks with me. I know somebody who's always right there. No matter how tough it gets in life, he's always right there. No matter what I'm going through, he's always right there. If you're sick, he's a doctor. If you're broke, he's getting can be money in your pocket. If you don't know him, you ought to try him. God don't owe us anything. We owe him everything. Ah, the problem with most of us is we think God owes us something. So you come to 
church all sad and all fried, but you ought to be telling God thank you. Yeah. 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 I've learned how to pray about some situations. Yeah. And, and something happens yeah. when I pray. Yeah. Either God says yes, yeah. he says no, uh -huh. or he says wait. Yeah. But while I'm waiting, yeah. I gotta trust him. Yeah. He says yes sometimes. Yeah. Then he said, no, that ain't good for you sometimes. Yeah. Then he said, you got to learn how to wait on me. Yeah. Because they that wait yeah. upon the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. Yeah. If you wait on God, he may not come when you want him, but he's always. It's like some days ago attitudes. You come to church, but you come to church like God owes you something. Yeah. You ought to be praying. Yeah. And you can tell how people are praying by how they act. Right. The Lord will not dictate to me how I feel about God. Situations and circumstances will not dictate to me how I feel about God. I ought to keep on praying. I ought to keep on asking God. Because in the last part of the text it said there's a promise. If you wait. I, I know y'all didn't see it, but it said right there in verse 9 it said, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. See. And ye shall find. Yeah. Now, yeah. and the door shall be open. Yeah. And then he turns around and talks about the promise. He said, For everyone that asks, yeah. receive. Yeah. And everyone that seeks, yeah. find. And everyone who knocks, the door is open. Yeah. And he said, My father knows how to give me what I need. Yeah. He said, If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that his father, will he give him a stone? Or will he give him a fish? Will he give him a serpent? He said, or if he, if he shall ask an egg, will he give, will he offer him a scorpion? All right. Since you being evil, oh, yeah. know how to give good gifts yeah. unto your children. Yeah. How much more? Right. How much more yeah. shall your heavenly father uh -huh. give you the Holy Spirit yeah. to them that ask? Yeah. And the reason you didn't get happy right there is because you don't recognize the purpose of the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He's a keeper. We haven't talked about this this morning. He's a keeper. Behold, he keeps it in you. The God that I serve, he is a keeper. And somebody needs to know this morning that he keeps me. In spite of the things I do, he keeps me. In spite of the places I go, he keeps me. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me. His own. And I'm glad this morning that the God that I serve, He will answer prayer. The God that I serve, He can answer prayer. The God that I serve, He knows our every cry. The God that I serve, He can answer prayer. Anybody in the house know that God can answer prayer. The Lord will answer your prayer if you hold on, if you hold on. The God that I serve, He can answer prayer. Anybody can testify that I prayed and I waited.